until they seen a post office dropping the mail off. Get it in, weigh it up, dropping the bell off. We get it how we live, I don't know what to tell y'all. Be well, dawg. From the city of pit bulls and Rottweilers made 30k out of Foot Locker and got fired. Same year. All right, welcome to Beats, Beds, and Browns. We couldn't be more pleased for Jujilla to join us this afternoon. We're going to chop it up. He's going to talk a little bit about where he's from, where he's been, and where he's going. And of course, we're going to run him through the ringer with hard hitters and wig splitters. One's got to go and pick your poison. So without further ado, Ju, I appreciate you coming out yes, today, sir, yes, making sir, the yes, trip sir. and coming with us. So um, why don't you tell us a little bit about where you're from? Uh, well, I'm from uh, Chicago. I'm from the south side of Chicago. Uh, well, I've really been all around Chicago, but I settled in the south side most of the time. So and I do music, I rap, yeah. That's really it. That's what I love to do. There you go. Most of the time. So yeah. you're you're full time performer. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yep. And my uh, I do clothing. So I'm all clothing, all music. Nice. Yeah. That's uh, that's keeping you busy. Um, what part of Chicago did you grow up in? What were you at staying at now? Well, uh, I grew up out west. I grew up in uh on 13th, like in Lomas in the projects, the mm -hmm. Abla projects. And then I moved out south when I was like 13 to 90th and Ashland. Okay. Yeah. So. Nice. And that's why I still be now. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what about, um, how long have you been performing? How long have you been writing? Um, I've been writing since 2003, but I've been performing since about 2014, 13, okay. maybe. I didn't uh, start performing right off that. How did that journey progress? 11 years to be writing. I mean, that explains some of the depth to your bars. But... Yeah. Yeah. Well, I had a brother and uh, me and my brother used to write. And we was going to do a bunch of tapes, but my uh, brother got incarcerated. Okay. So um, when he got incarcerated, that kind of slowed music down for me. And then I did a tape in 2012, and the tape got so much response, then I was like, okay, I'll start performing. Nice. And then uh, when I started performing, it just took off. And performing is kind of a family tradition, right? You have yeah. three, two brothers that uh, perform also? Or? Yeah, my uh, younger brother performed with me, and my other brother be singing and stuff. Yeah. Okay, nice. Yeah. So... Is that just a family genetic thing or? Yeah, we all just like music. Okay. Yeah, we like music. What uh, What are some of the influences? Is it straight hip hop or you get outside? Um, I like I like jazz. I like classical music. Um, I like just chill hop. Sometimes I really don't listen to a lot of rap. Okay. It just be like a lot of old school jazz. So, no, not only hip hop. Yeah. You can't only listen to hip hop. No, nah, <laughs> not just one thing for sure. Yeah, then you only gonna make that one kind of Hip hop. I feel like I'm versatile with hip hop. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And listening to your stuff, you get you kind of get a feel for some of those influences mm -hmm. that you go about. We ask most of the performers that we interview about uh, definitions of success and how success is a journey. Mm -hmm. And you know, you've been uh, 11 years a writer, now mm -hmm. a performer, now you're selling merchandise, now mm -hmm. you're getting streaming money coming in. Mm -hmm. You know, where does that end? Where does that go next? Um, my goal is to uh, try to get a million streams a month. Okay. That's the goal I'm chasing for my streams. But um, with music, I think music just make me happy. So doing music, I, I would still do music if I got no streams. Yeah. yeah. It just make me feel good. Like I can be anywhere. And if I'm going through anything, if I perform, uh, I don't see anything. It's just me, like on cloud nine. Okay. Yeah. So. And is it uh, performing on the stage, performing in the studio? What's the... In the studio, is it's cool. I like being in the studio. That takes me somewhere. But on stage, takes me away. It's a different... Yeah, it's, it's super different. On stage, I, I see nobody. Okay. Once I'm in the building, I don't see any rappers. Not just blinded by the lights, but you're yeah, just in your I'm zone. I'm just in my own zone. Like, I'm not going to be talking to people. I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to do anything. I'm in a zone until I hit the stage. And when I hit the stage, it's like nobody there. Like, I'm performing. Okay, I'm so you're home. a sober performer? Or do mm -hmm. you, you drink yeah. outside of that? Yeah. After the show is over. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After the show, drink with me. But before the show, it's like, don't talk to me. Don't try to do nothing. I'm focused. Yeah. I'm listening to my music. Um, I want the crowd control. I'm paying attention to the crowd. I want to see who is who, what sound they like, because you learn a lot just looking at other artists, looking at who in the crowd. I don't think people, artists, pay attention to that. They just come in like, I got a performance. Right. And then they perform, and sometimes it's a little dull. Well, and that's what 
I know a lot of performers that have to indulge in smoke or drink mm-hmm. to get up on stage, mm-hmm. and then they're missing that. They're not plugged yeah. in to the live back right. and forth because it is interplay. Yeah, right? I mean, yeah. if they get live, you get live. Early, yeah. yeah, and then if you're telling them, because I don't really, I'm not really like a jump around performer. Yeah. I'm like, I talk to people though. So when I'm talking, I think it connect, and now they following me, and they really listen. So you're eyeballing an individual, or uh, uh, the whole crowd. But it's like, it's like I, I just want to catch them for a second, yeah. maybe thirty seconds. Like you hear me, or you paying attention to me, and then once I got you, I got you, because now you listening. Mm-hmm. So, so what's uh, what's the biggest crowd favorite performance? What mm. uh, what really stands out from your performing history? Um, I performed at. The Wire, me and my brother sold out The Wire. It was real good. We got it on video. But we just sold out uh, Promontory, too. Okay. That was a good performance. So um, it was just, it's just, you. we got the videos on YouTube. Yeah. You just got to watch them, like, to see how the people connect. They rapping word for word. And then we'll be, like, the opening artist. Sometimes we don't headline. We're yeah. open from some of our friends. But when people in the crowd see us performing, they like, why way I don't go last? Right. So it's, I got a lot of good show memories. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's incredible. What about in the studio? Do you enjoy the studio process? Is it kind of a drudgery to you, or is it more where you can release your, relax your creative? Yeah, I can relax it, but it's still, the, the studio is like, it's like love, love, hate, because you hearing it so much. You hearing your, like when they chopping it up, they mixing up your yeah. songs, you hearing it so much. What you love it, but you want to just hear it clean right off back when you put it down. So it's like I love the the well, the product that comes after. Sure. When they done. Sure, it's like it proof in an article, right? Yeah, you read yeah. it eight times, you're not <laughs> catching nothing new. Like yeah. on to the next one. Yeah. Very cool. Um, what about uh, expanding outside of the Chicago area? I know you're you're successful on streaming. Have you mm-hmm. done performances nationally, or do you have any in the in the pipeline coming up? Uh, well, I did a couple. I only did a couple outside of Chicago. And um, really, I'm just, I'm focused on trying to line up a good show to tape outside of Chicago. Okay. Like, I don't want to just go perform. Right. Like, I, I've been... One I, man on a, yeah, on a lineup. I've been to Houston to perform, to Atlanta to perform, but just to perform. And, you know, I don't think people pay attention to that when you just go perform. Sure. It's like, it's These just are another my artist. strongest four guys, right. and we're going to go out and tour. Right, and then you got a nice show set up. You bringing stuff with you. You got the 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 right equipment for a stage set up where they really feel you. Yeah. They understand where you coming from. And you through the show yourself. You ain't coming to somebody's show and they giving you ten minutes to try to you know dish out your whole catalog. Yeah. So yeah, I got to do it myself. We uh, AM early morning in particular came yeah. and spoke on that yeah. about how guys wouldn't show up and he'd be there mm-hmm. and you got five minutes, go fill the stage yeah. and he would just be live and just mm-hmm. be ready to go for it. Mm-hmm. Um, that's gotta be a challenge to always be ready as a yeah. performer. And, yeah. I just did a, I just did a shout out to AM early morning. I just did a uh, track with AM. Okay. So we got some, we trying to do some stuff too. Nice. I try to do a tape with everybody. Yeah. Everybody I rock with, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's hard. To there needs to point. be more of that mentality, yeah. right? And, yeah. Inclusion versus exclusion. Yeah. There's just so many people. No, I'm not rocking with that. Well, why yeah. not? You know, that may, yeah. you may unearth a new fan base. And... Sometimes I feel like in Chicago, artists be feeling like uh, they be disappointed with Chicago. Like they they don't want to do certain stuff because they feel like they see a lot of artists do it and get nothing from it. A okay. lot of people want to see what they getting first. Right. And then perform, but no, I got that mindset too. Like, no, I'll perform anywhere. Well, you just said it. It's yeah. Is I'm performing. I'm happy. Yeah. I'm not doing it for the yeah. money. I'm not doing it for the crowd. Yeah. I'm not doing it for the the streams or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's, and it don't matter how many people in the room. Yeah. If it, if I come and it's a full show, good. But if it's four people, then we gonna rock out with four. Bro. Nice. Yeah. So you got momentum. You got the streams. I'm sure you've got a database when you promote shows. Mm-hmm. Now you said, how can I how can I get into merchandising and how mm-hmm. can I get into the clothing line? Tell me about that. Um, well, I, uh, I had a clothing line before the one I got now and, uh, it showed, it didn't work out too good, Okay. but it, I learned some lessons from it. There you go. And then I mixed the, I was like, oh, you know, I'm gonna mix my, um, music with my clothing line. And then I just mixed them together and I took what I knew and I watched a couple videos on clothing and a couple doc- documentaries. And then I just took it from there and it actually did good. Nice. Right, so tell me about that. You. 
are the stories you're telling reflected in individual pieces of clothing or are the characters or how do, how do you mean you tie it into your music? Um, well, I just, I, I, I really, the, the character is like a mixer, like my friends, like a lot, a lot of my friends are weird and they'd be like, that's you on there. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not that it's just a mix of all of them. And, um, yeah, some of the stories tied to it with the, uh, why, why and being too wise and just coming from what we, uh, coming from and trying to think a little wiser yeah. coming from a street uh area so it, it kind of tie in and then some of it just kind of like sales like this is dope so we're gonna mix it in with it sure yeah yeah there's i mean there's so many different brands mm. leaders lyrical lemonade leaders, I mean, is, yeah. yeah leaders is tough yeah <laughs> <laughs> i haven't been tough. there to wait in line yet but i can't no, snap that no, stuff up that's a good store that's a they they classic yeah. i know um shannon who work in leaders okay so shannon used to work in um finish line i used to work in Foot Locker nice. in a mall the yep. competing sports uh, yeah. distributor retailers yeah. so they've been he's been in clothing a long time and i've been in shoes and clothing a long time nice yeah. real nice yeah. well glad to see you're making some money off yeah this, uh, Thank don't you. stop the hustle right yeah. yeah um so we talked a little bit about the chicago scene uh you know uh, we were here earlier with queenie larouge talking about trap and drill and the assumptions mm -hmm. when they hear you're from chicago mm -hmm. her you other artists, they're not trap and drill. They're lyricists. They're yeah. street poets is what yeah. I like to say. Uh, talk to me about that and how you find a way to express through your pen what you've gone through and what you're feeling. Um, well, I like the drill scene too, though. I, I, I really do like what they're doing because it's just like another genre, genre. But with me, I just come from, I feel like well, my era that I came up in is just like lyricists. All the artists I always felt was like AZ. Nas, um, I like Nip from the new era, Kendrick. Yeah. And uh, just seeing Nas and AZ write with their pen and tell a story, that's just, that I feel like when I get my pen and my, and I still write on paper. I write everything okay. on paper. I just like to see my words, but telling my story is just like a form of therapy for me. Yeah. Yeah, getting stuff off and, you know, telling people certain stories, it lifts a weight off your shoulders for me. Well, absolutely, and it's always been a creative release. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I read a lot of history books about, uh, you know, early presidential uh, candidates and, and early presidents, mm -hmm. and they're, well, my favorite poet, and mm -hmm. this and that. You know, I feel like if I were to say that now, it'd be a little strange, but I, my yeah. favorite artist mm -hmm. who's writing through poetry and then mm -hmm. finding a beat to it mm -hmm. is a way that you can connect with that experience yeah. and, and dive in. And, and, and connect with people. Because people be feeling it. You, you'll be surprised. Some people be going through the same stuff you're going through. And then you talk them through their stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. That was like one of my songs. I put out a, a tape in 2020 called uh, Bird's Eye View. And it had a song called Roses I Read. And then I had a song called Sorry for the Roses. Okay. So Roses I Read was like a heartbreak song for, for me from, yeah. from a relationship I was in. And I told my side of the story of being hurt. Then I put Sorry for the Roses to explain me, my evilness, and, yeah. you know, the things I was doing that made her. That's a you know fun so, way to interplay yeah. that experience. Oh, man, they had people loving it. People was loving that song, both of them, but really sorry for the roses because I was really apologizing through music. Yeah. Yeah. How was, was that cool. received? Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> good and bad. Okay. Good and bad. I, Why are you I, publicizing our affairs? And You uh, know, yeah, yes. Yeah. But I, I kind of feel like I got my point across, like, because... You know, if you can't talk to someone yeah. and y'all got to the point where y'all can't talk to each other, all I can do is tell you in a way that's creative to me. And it gave you closure yep. and, and potentially yep. open a door for communication. Yep. Yep. That's awesome, man. All through music. Um, man, so many things. I'm, I'm like trying to take mental notes as you're talking. But uh, so, you know, processing through emotions, working with other people. How about the way someone's connected with you either through social media or at a show mm -hmm. and you said, you know, this song, this track really connected with me mm -hmm. and an experience where that was uh, um, taking place. Well, that's really at um, all my shows, but like at um, The Wire, I had did a show with me, uh, I think it was Four, I don't know if y'all know Four, Not Four yet. from Black Ink. Okay. Black Ink Crew, uh, Valet. It was a lot of artists, but I was the opening artist. And I had did the show when I came off stage. Everybody was connecting with the music. And that, that's really what gave me a little push in Chicago, too, to get on, like, Illinois radio and yeah. stuff like that. But the crowd just connected with all the songs I was performing. Because I really try to perform. I got a lot of songs, but I try to perform the stuff that's going to connect with the crowd. Okay. Yeah, so it pulled a lot of people and in. And is that and, to your uh, 
connection in the moment or you know, seasonally or vibe you get from the crowd and switch on the fly or um i think it's from 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 what i'm playing like whatever music i'm playing at that moment they connect with or sometimes they yell out our acts on instagram what y'all want me to perform and then whatever get the most votes yeah. then i perform those okay that connect with them that way nice Mm -hmm. uh, so that's kind of an example of a positive experience. What about mm -hmm. something negative that, you know, somebody's reaching out on social media, either a, a keyboard tough guy or uh... I th Yeah, I don't, I don't really too much get into them. Like, I probably wouldn't pay attention to it because yeah. it's the Internet. If it's negative or if somebody being tough, I, I probably wouldn't pay attention. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure thing. I'll school them out the way. Like, OK, feet. it's yeah, it's the Internet. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I can't touch you on here. You can't touch me on here. Yeah. So it's no hard feeling um, to that end. Obviously, you know, marketing, uh, the music industry has changed dramatically over time. Uh, it's less maybe of a reliance on live shows and more on streaming and building mm -hmm. awareness on social. Mm -hmm. How do you engage in that, again, while staying away from the fray? Um, <clears throat> I, I don't know, because I'm, I'm cool with the Internet, but I'm not cool. Like, if, if I didn't have to be, I wouldn't be on the Internet. Oh, yeah. You know, I wouldn't be on it at all, but I just remain myself on the sites like i don't do too much i don't i'm not gonna act a fool on social right. media just to you're not get gonna some start attention. doing TikTok yeah, dances <laughs> no, i'm not gonna do TikTok dances i just i think people connect with me just being me so it, it what i'm doing how i'm growing is like what you're doing planning you know yeah. it take time you know and if you patient with it i feel like okay i i grow the right way but if i rush it of course y'all can put some uh uh steroids or some of these yeah. plants and grow them fast but you know, you ain't gonna want it that way. Right. It, you you want patient, but if I'm patient with it, I feel like and keep making the right steps forward, then I'll do right. Nice. Yeah. Um, so these uh, episodes will all launch kind of mid August. Mm -hmm. What what do you got coming up in mid August that you'd like the audience to know about? Um, I got a couple tapes. I got a tape with uh Panamera P. It's gonna be called Wise Pirates. Nice. So I just did a tape with my uh, friend called Breeze B Wise, and that's out now. But uh, I'm already done with part two. So by the time this drop, it'll probably be part two and part three out. Nice. And then uh, I got a tape with a bunch of my guys from Chicago as a collective. We call it the council, you know, and uh, that tape probably be out by the time I'll, by the time this drop too. Nice. So you're just constantly working. Yeah, always. What, uh, always. you ever run into uh, writer's block or? No. Okay. No. <laughs> I got stuff to talk about. I've been through some things. Yeah. <laughs> so I got stuff to talk about. Okay. And then other people's stories. Yeah, so I got a lot to talk about. Um, I asked Queenie this. It's just kind of dawned on me. But as prolific writers, mm -hmm. you know, uh, makes me think of literature and English class mm -hmm. in high school. Were you a good student? Were you uh, not not buying into school? or what? Um, Sometimes. When you wanted to. <laughs> yeah. I was good. I got, I got kicked out of my uh, first school for fighting uh, Calumet, and I went to Crane and graduated. Okay. But yeah, I, I was a, I, I could be a good student. I was a good student when I wanted to be. Sure. Yeah. That's half of it. It's just yeah. boredom, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't feel like the uh, modern education system challenges the people who have yeah. a, a, I don't want to say superior intellect, but an mm -hmm. advanced intellect. They can process a lot of information. Mm -hmm. It's always kind of uh, coaching to the mean, so mm -hmm. to speak. And then they be teaching you a lot of stuff you don't need and you're not interested in. So. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, we'll cover uh, beef or no beef earlier, but what, what got you fighting as a teenager? Uh, <laughs> uh, the, the crowd I was with, yeah. the area I was in, then... Just somebody egging you on over a situation that didn't need to be... Well, you can say that. <laughs> <laughs> and you it can was, always say pass, man. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, no, nah, it was just the area we was from, and we, had, we got sent to school in another area yeah. where we weren't supposed to be, but... Nobody can tell you what you're supposed to be. Right. And we came to school every day. I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> deal with it. Yeah. And they was trying to deal with it, so. Absolutely. Yeah. So in, in that Let Them Know video with the uh, boxing match taking All place at the friends. front of it, is that, uh, is that a real fight or those two guys just at each other? Oh, uh, when we had disagreements in my neighborhood, you got to put on the glove. Okay. Yeah, so no it fight. It seemed like there was some yeah. intent there. Yeah, yeah, no, um. No hands on each other, no real hands on each other, because some of us used to box. Yeah. So no putting hands, but you can get in the gloves. I've been having gloves since I was in, like, eighth grade. Like, come on, we could just fight it out in here. That's a great way to do yeah, it, yeah. man. Yeah. Conflict aversion? Yeah. Um, let's see. We talked about success. We talked about journey. What about uh, whiskey? You a whiskey drinker? 
I do drink whiskey. I don't know a lot about whiskey, but I like whiskey. Yeah. Yeah. I do like whiskey. I like scotch. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's literally why I started this. I'm not an expert on any of these topics. Oh, but, okay. <laughs> uh, a decade of, of uh, I got a 12 and a 10 year old at home. Mm -hmm. I got a little disconnected from the music scene. Mm -hmm. uh, beds is the uh, gardening part. I mm -hmm. got two 15 by 20 foot garden beds on the property. We got apple trees, pear trees, and grape trees. Oh, okay. I don't know nothing about that. It's every yeah. year I learn more and more. Mm -hmm. And then the Browns, like I said, I started being a, a Scotch fan mm -hmm. and uh, really like American straight whiskey. Mm. Um, but now everybody's on bourbon, and you gotta yeah. like learn what's the difference, and it's yeah. all recipe and what you can do. Because I don't know ones. the difference. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but I know they taste good. Yeah, Absolutely, so, that's yeah. I literally uh, I drink coffee, iced tea, water, and whiskey all at the same pace, oh, okay. which gets me into trouble. But <laughs> you, you ever been to um Maple and Ash? Maple and Ash. It's in Chicago. It's like a uh, downtown restaurant. Chicago. Is that like a self distillery and kind of a gastro pub type? No, no. It's just like a um, up, like one of the upscale restaurants, but they drinks. Okay. They got like a um, Japanese Japanese whiskey. Oh. And they put it inside or... of um, old fashioned. Yeah. So yeah, it's pretty good. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Try that out. Maple and Ash. We'll check mm -hmm. that out. We'll do a live uh, remote there. Yeah. And they got the <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Um. I don't know if I can say it. I don't <laughs> give a fuck uh, uh, old-fashioned. It's okay. like $75, though. Oh, shit. What's yeah. in it? <laughs> uh, it, had, it got chocolate. It got gold oh, flakes. It got a lot of stuff. Yeah. yeah. See, I'm, I'm like, uh, I had a professor in college. He said the connoisseur with mm -hmm. the accent on sewer. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so okay. So I don't need okay. the fancy stuff. Yeah. We do a VO maple syrup, orange peel, and bitters uh, old-fashioned at our mm -hmm. house, and we just pound those. That yeah, they delicious. got the regular ones. They got the regular <laughs> ones, too. I I'll try the fancy one, yeah. yet. I ain't tried it yet. Skip that second. Yeah, time. right? <laughs> Maybe for a steak. I don't yeah. even know about that. Well, I, 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 I don't eat steak. I eat uh, lamb. Okay. Yeah, lamb chops. Oh, man. Medium. Said, lamb chops for Easter. Yeah. They're so good. Yeah. Oh, unbelievable. So uh, a bunch of projects coming up. Any mm -hmm. live performances or missed you at the promontory now for a while? Um, maybe, maybe. Yeah, we ain't been setting up no shows since we did the promontory. Okay. We, I just been working on tapes and my little brother, he had took a little break. So when he get to rolling back around with music and the council tape finished, we probably do a lot of shows. Nice. Well, last year we did a launch concert. I'll be reaching out to you for that and we'll Man, talk through yeah. some details. And Definitely. I want to find the spot. I know AM Early Morning has been at Magoo's successfully a couple times. We mm -hmm. were at a, a pop-up print screen, Rock-A-Block. He's mm -hmm. a business owner out here. There's a cigar shop, but you know, I'll reach out with the details once we square it away. Okay, cool. cool. I'll look to partner with you. Um, is there anything that uh, you'd like to cover that we didn't cover? Uh, I feel like we rushed through a bunch of stuff, um, but we covered everything I normally yeah. talk about. It's, yeah, uh, yeah. No, I feel like I feel like it's pretty good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we didn't ask uh, if you garden at all, right? Oh no, no, and I don't, I don't. But I want to learn. I was just telling somebody this. I want to learn how to garden. I think is. I think it's important to know how to grow your own food and just even mm -hmm. take care of a plant. It's like a different thing. I feel like it'd make you a little more peaceful. Oh, absolutely. Learning how to nurture a plant. There's yeah. uh, it's funny because, you know, I started this with things I wanted to learn about and then you kind of find different channels for people digging into the same stuff. And mm -hmm. there's uh, actually a, um, Ron Finley is the gangster gardener mm -hmm. and he says gangster is just like doing what you want with gusto, mm -hmm. like nothing, nothing, no other connotation. There's a I E T E F DJ Cavum. Mm -hmm. He was at the All Star Game, and mm. he's a vegan and, and planting, and he, mm -hmm. he's a, they call him an eco hip hop artist. Mm. So I mean, there's kind of a movement around this, which I'm fine to tap into and learn mm -hmm. more about. But uh, just that, I have my uh, row gardener's row up here. I'm here every morning, mm -hmm. <laughs> turning the lights on, spritzing it with yeah. some water, and gives me peace. From so you grow inside and outside. You know. Uh, the inside gardening, we start with the LED lights. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of stuff starts and fails. Mm -hmm. uh, we got to bring it outside to hardy it up, get it used to the outside conditions. And then I also start stuff straight from seed in the garden mm -hmm. that, um, you know, I soak the seeds overnight and just dump them in an area. And then if it comes up, then I can thin it and move it. So oh, okay. uh, we'll do pick your poison, mm -hmm. which again, you can either plant a seed that we've got soaking or we can transplant one. Okay. Uh, but that'll be fun. I think uh, next we're going to go to... Uh, Hard hitters and wig splitters. These questions are divide houses, uh, divide marriages, and uh, <laughs> we're gonna get your you know rapid fire yes or no quick answer um, for these if you're ready. 
Okay. All okay, right. We can do it. All right. So, uh, beef or no beef? No beef. No beef. Cash or Queens? Cash. Big black truck or 6'4"? Six 6'4". Four? Six four. Nice. <laughs> Edibles or flour? Edibles. Tupac or Biggie? Tupac. <laughs> Bears or Colts? Bears. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough choice, right? <laughs> Nike or Champion? Nike. Cubs or Sox? Sox. Is a hot dog a sandwich? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> ketchup or no ketchup? Ketchup. Hot or mild? Hot. Jordan or LeBron? Jordan. Ellen or Oprah? Oprah. Marvel or DC? Marvel. Bezos or Musk? Musk. Nice. <laughs> We'll share that on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Must. Uh, this is a big Chicago one. Jardinera or Jardinera? Jardinera. Jardinera. Yeah. All right. And then the, the capstone, vanilla or chocolate? Vanilla. Vanilla. All yeah. right. You made it through. Yeah. Hard hitters and wig splitters <laughs> with my man, Jujilla. We appreciate vanilla. you. <laughs> um, up next, we got one got to go. We're going to serve you famous threes, famous trios, things mm -hmm. that come in triplets, and uh, you just got to get rid of one. Okay. Here we are. One's got to go. We give you three items, and you got to send one packing, man. Okay. You ready for okay. this? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. Phone, keys, wallet. Phone. Getting rid of your phone. I like it. Yeah. Anti-tech. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Bell Biv DeVoe. Oh, oh. Biv. <laughs> Biv. <laughs> Mo Larry Curly. Oh, Larry. Larry. Everybody's <laughs> ganging up on Larry. Get rid, get rid of Larry. <laughs> uh, rock, paper, scissors. Oh, uh, paper. Paper. Harry, Ron, or Hermione? I don't know who none of them are. Um, okay. That's Harry Potter. Oh, uh, I ain't getting rid of Harry Potter. No. Uh, Ron. Okay. <laughs> See you later, Ron. Redheaded stepchild. He's gone. <laughs> Fuji's. Lauren Hill, Prize, or Wyclef? Prize. Prize, gone. Up out of Everybody's ganging up on Prize, <laughs> yeah. too. You can't get rid of Wyclef or Lauren. <laughs> no, I, can't get rid of I know. Lauren. Yeah, no, yeah, no way. Not at all. Bacon, lettuce, tomato. Bacon. Yeah, thought that was coming. Luke, yeah. Leia, and Han. No pork on my fork. <laughs> <laughs> no pork on my fork. I don't eat pork. There you go. All right, Luke, Leia, or Han? Han. Han. Yeah. Ooh, that one hurts personally. <laughs> <laughs> Chocolate, vanilla, or strawberry? Chocolate. Chocolate, right gone. Yeah. All right, faith, hope, or charity? Oh, um, charity. Charity, gone. All right, Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok? All of them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Facebook. Facebook, all yeah. right. Getting rid of the old timers. <laughs> yeah, you got to let the new era do their thing. All right, now we got pick your poison. We're here uh, with Jujilla. We're going to pick your poison. He's decided to transplant. We've got a uh, four-week acorn squash plant. We're going to drop it in a cup, and uh, hopefully we're going to track the journey as he keeps it alive, and uh, he's going to document that for us on Instagram yeah. or on his social media choice. Uh, for those of you watching, uh, visit BeatsBedsBrowns.com. We give out free seed packs of heirloom seeds saved from our garden, uh, acorn squash, carrot, or dill seed. And uh, we'll send those to you free of charge. We appreciate it if you would document uh, how well those do online as well by tagging at Beats Beds Browns. And as always, if you haven't subscribed, uh, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel at Beats Beds Browns for content around emerging hip hop artists in the Chicagoland, Northwest Indiana region, um, gardening in all its forms from commercial ag to homestead gardening. 
and bourbon and whiskey distillers. So without further ado, I'm going to ask Jew to reach in here, fill your cup with dirt, just give it a scoop. Oh, just reach yeah, it with my is, hand? Yeah, well, I'm sorry. You oh, want gloves? Okay. You want gloves? <laughs> no, no, I oh, can. Okay. I can reach in it. Okay, yeah, yeah. I was going to say scoop the cup too, but whatever oh, you okay. prefer. Yeah, yeah, I'll scoop the cup. It's good? Yeah, that's good. We'll top it off. So what we're going to do is we're going to reach in here and grab about half of this dirt, and the root system's only going to be two or three inches in here, mm -hmm. but you want to kind of cup it okay. and then drop it in so that it all... Uh, Transplants and then we'll top it off with dirt and then okay. we'll uh, water it as well. So, yeah, as long as you get the whole root, that's really your major concern here. Okay. And uh, that dirt is a mix of potting soil and a product called peat moss. And then drop that in there. There you go. And we'll want to cover that with dirt. More? Yeah, you can top it off. The deeper the root is, the, the better in squash, because this will turn into a vining plant, and uh, yeah, perfect. And you'll want to keep the dirt moist probably every uh, two or three days. Give it a healthy watering, mm -hmm. 20 to 30 squirts from a mister, or if you've got a, a watering can or just a cup of water, probably okay. eight to 10 ounces of water. The bottom on this isn't slotted, which would allow for any excess water to come through. Mm -hmm. So in three to four days, um, or sorry, two to three weeks, maybe transplant it into a pot that has slots. Oh, okay. And, uh, or into the ground. If you okay. want, you can pop this right into the ground after uh, maybe five to seven days because it's going to be shocked right now. Mm -hmm. Water it, get it comfortable in its surroundings, and take that whole cup of dirt, mm -hmm. and the plant should come out and drop it right into the ground just like you do okay. now. And then squash, we've found, just kind of thrives. Yeah. takes over the bed. I'm going to get a little pot. Yeah. All right. Get a little pot. Cool. Yeah. And if you would document that journey for us, we'd love to see how you're doing. And okay. any questions, let us know because we can turn that into uh, Q and A's or, or content to help other people who are growing the squash as well. Okay. Cool. Cool. I got you. All right. Well, we couldn't have been happier here to cut it up with Jujilla. Made the trip from uh, Chicago to Indiana and uh, gave us an insight into being a performer, full time performer, merchandise retailer and uh, amazing artists, we couldn't be happier. Thank you so much, you. Thank you, thank All you, right, appreciate, it. We appreciate you. Same year that Annette died, remember I was typing rest in peace on the net crime. By 2025, I better hide me a vest line, a jet flying, throw a bullet at you like Rex Ryan. All gas, I ain't never been up in park, shorty. Shooting shit 88% from the arc, shorty. Game on the line, I'ma hit it like Rob Horry on God, shorty. Turn a bad bitch to a sob story like Housewives. Give a fuck if you bout it, bout it, I'm bout mine. You ain't got a gun, I ain't going nowhere without mine. Nigga saying I'm top 10, I'm top 2. You ain't gotta ask me who number 1, cause it's not you. Fast life, brain, fast money, but fast cars running to them walls like crash dummies. The past